It's time for the Players' Championship. Let's talk some golf. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I'm your host, Steven, and we are back to talk some golf, baby. That's right. I'm ready to go. I'm excited. It's one of my favorite tournaments of the year. It is the Players' Championship at TPC Sawgrass. That's right. So uh, there's not going to be a bets recap because we're pressed for time, but it's we'll go over the last two weekends. Uh, last week, we did hit a Will Zalatoris top 10, which was nice. And uh, I was hoping he'd get the outright. Unfortunately, he faded down the stretch. But Harris English, we had him for a top 20. He was in second place at one point. Double bogeyed the last hole of the tournament and fell into 21st place. It hurt my heart. But you know what? We'll bounce back from that. But anyways, we're still due to get that first outright win. Um, the Players' Championship, if you don't know much about it, it's one of the most famous courses out there. Some people consider it the fifth major of the golf tourney. So it's got a huge $25 million purse. The winner gets a nice, cool, easy four and a half million. Can you imagine playing golf for four days, winning a tourney, and you take home four and a half mil? That is just unbelievable. But before we get into all the research and everything else, the first round leader bets. We didn't have one last week, so we are now having a $40 giveaway to the winner. Here's what you got to do if you are new to the channel. Just leave a comment with two golfers that you think could be the first round leader. That's right. So we leave two to give you two options. But also, if you bet somebody that someone else has also, uh, the tiebreaker is the second golfer. This has nothing to do with odds or anything like that. You just pick two golfers to lead after the first round, and the tiebreaker is the better golfer out of the second golfer. So that's what we got. Hopefully, we can get a winner. We got a lot of big golfers playing in this tourney, like always. So it's going to be a fun one to watch. But if you are new to the channel and only here because you're watching golf, we give out daily basketball, baseball, and football um, bets every single day during the week. So come join us. Hit that subscribe button. we got a great community. The Discord is below almost 3,000 subscribers. It is awesome. So uh, go click on that. It's free to join. So I'm ready to go. we got a lot of sports going on. Players Championship, MLB only a couple weeks away. I can't wait. And then, of course, NBA ramping up, getting closer to the playoffs. So in this video... Like I said, we usually show bets recap for everything, but this video, we're just not going to go over the last two tournaments. We'll go over the last, next three uh, next time, but you guys probably don't care that much. But last week, we I think we lost about a unit or so, if I remember right, um, because of Harris English double, double bogeying, bogeying the last hole of the tournament. That one hurt. But either way, um, we move on. So we're going to talk the course tourney preview at TPC Sawgrass. Um, talking key stats to win here, and then we're going to talk a bunch of player stats, players who have played well here, players who have good fit here, what are key stats uh, in regards to what kind of golfers win here, and things like that. So we're going to have some fun, but of course we're going to finish it with our own best bet. So hit that like button, leave a comment below, and hit that subscribe button as we near 21,000 subscribers. Appreciate all the support as we slowly build this golf community. We just started uh, this season with golf, so it's been a lot of fun so far, but let's get into it. And it's, let's talk TPC Sawgrass. All right, just like every week, we like to give you some golf stats. If you are new to betting or just following golf in general, you're going to see some of these stats around. And I wanted to give you guys a glossary, two pages worth, just to kind of let you guys know what this all means. The main one, SG means strokes gain, positive or negative, every aspect of golf. It's just a way of, uh, it's kind of like advanced metrics for golf. Um, and you'll see all these other ones. And then as you can see, let's go to page two now. Um, and that's just some more of them. It's not every single one of them, but hopefully it just helps you guys out because you're going to see these on some of the slides. But now let's talk the tourney course preview at TPC Sawgrass, one of the most beautiful courses on tour. As you can see there on the right side, the famous 17th hole, the Island Green. Some historic putts have been made, especially one by Mr. Tigger Woods right there on the edge of the green. Um, but man, this it's been a lot of fun. But let's just talk about the course in general. I'm just under 7,200 yards, par 72 and water is technically in play for all 18 holes. That's right. So that it can make this uh, tournament a little tough to bet because you can have a golfer doing well, and then he hits one into the uh, water, and you're in trouble. I mean, it, we're talking inches. can be a birdie, or it could roll off a green into a water somewhere. So that's that tough. But um, it is the most penal course on the tour. And it changed drastically in 2019 when the tourney moved to March. It was later on in the year, but then they had to change it up, and it's in May or in March. So, in my opinion, stats kind of pre 2019 because the course is a lot different. Greens were different. Um, you know, greens are a little softer now, um, and things like that. I I don't take too much into account before 2019. And then, of course, we got some POA greens here at TPC Sawgrass. 
And just something to note, 40% of approach shots come from within 150 feet. So we've had courses before this year that, you know, you got to be good from 2 to 225 out. You got long. It's a long course. This is not one of them. You're looking at about 125 to 150 being a sweet spot here. Um, and then last year, they lengthened the rough another inch. So it's now three and a half inches, and it just puts more emphasis on driving accuracy. You got a lot of thin there. Uh, fairways and you got some tree lines and things like that and then the rough is now longer so you're going to want to have to uh, find the fairway obviously you're going to want to do that in every tournament but uh, here it's a little more important now that they that rough is a little longer uh greenside bunkers if you watch this tournament it can be tough well it's not as tough for them of course but it's tough for us um, but greenside bunkers have been tough so in my opinion around the green is going to be important how well you are how's your bunker game how's your short game things like that um, and then, of course, you got that 17th Island Green, which can uh, can be historic and turn around um, all around and give you some confidence. Or you can hit one in the water or twice or three times like I have seen before. And your round and tournament can go to crap. But anyways, that's just a little start about the tournament, the course. Let's talk some uh, some more preview and some key stats and things. But the past champions in this field, Mr. Scotty Scheffler, who just won last week. Uh, Justin Thomas, Webb Simpson, Roy McElroy, Si Woo Kim, Jason Day, Kucher, and Adam Scott. Those are the champions that are in this field right now that have won this tournament before. And then something I like to do is give you guys some key stats to win at this course. So approach is going to be huge. Uh, these greens are not very big. We got some smaller greens here. Um, and like I said, if you just hit it in the wrong part of the green, you could see your ball slowly roll off the green into the water or into a bunker or somewhere like that. So approach shots into these greens is going to be very important. Uh, driving accuracy, like I mentioned, you don't want to find yourself in the trees. You don't want to find yourself in that three and a half inch rough anymore. Um, and then like we talked about proximity, 100 to 150 yards out. If you're someone who's good from 150 out, it's going to be a good course for you. Um, that kind of goes hand in hand with approach, obviously. But then you got stroke gained around the green scrambling. We talked about it before. Um, you're going to find bunkers. You're going to find some tough chip shots and things like that. You're going to have to have a good game around the green or it can be ugly. I've seen people chip shots that just barely went past the pin and all of a sudden roll down the other side into the water. I mean, it's a game of inches. That's for sure on this course. So and then scrambling, yeah, like we already mentioned. Um, and then stroke skiing, POA putting, of course. That's the surface we're playing on. And then bogey avoidance. You got to avoid the big holes. And, uh, you know, it's important everywhere. But uh, bogey avoidance is going to be key on this course as well. So those are the key stats. Now let's go talk some player stats. All right, in regards to course history, the top 10 players in this field, there they are. I'm not going to read every one of them. Justin Thomas obviously won a few years ago. Scotty Scheffler's won, so that's no surprise there. Siwoo Kim again. Um, but those are 10 players that have uh, had played well here and have good course history. And then five players that have made the cut in four consecutive appearances. That's right. How about that random stat? Justin Thomas, Siwoo Kim again, Tom Hoagiebun, Brian Harmon, and Denny McCarthy are the five guys who have made the cut in four consecutive appearances. Uh, that can help if you're trying to, you know, maybe do a little make the cut parlay uh, type of bet and things like that. Obviously, it doesn't mean they're guaranteed a fifth one. But it's good to know these golfers are playing well here. And then five players with multiple top 10 finishes in the last five years. So there's no Siwoo Kim. How about that? Victor Hovland, Hideki Matsuyama, Tommy Fleetwood, Keegan Bradley, and Brian Harmon are your five players. So I like to give these out just to kind of give you a starting point for your research. Like we like to do in all sports, we like to just give you as much research help as, you, as we can. Um, and you know what, if you, you like some of these guys and you're trying to decide between one or the other, maybe some of these stats kind of help you out and lean you one way or the other. But uh, let's go to the next page now. And that's the top 10 players in strokes gained approach. Like I mentioned in this tournament, uh, and this course is going to be very important into these smaller greens. In the last 36 rounds, those are the top 10 players on approach. Um, you know, Hoagie's up there again, Finau, Scheffler, Moy is always on their approach shots. Obviously, that only comes down to whether or not he can actually putt. Um, the rookie of the year runaway right now, Jake Knapp, who's already has a win under his belt. Keith Mitchell, uh, Matthew Pavon, which we talked about last week, uh, playing really well right at the top of the FedEx standings and then so on and so on. Um, but and then we go over to the top 10 players and strokes gained around the green the last 36 rounds. That is not Siwoo Kim. That's SH Kim. A little different. But uh, Justin Thomas up there, Matsuyama, you're noticing a lot of the same names. Um, and that's for a reason. These guys have played well here. So. Um, anyways, take another screenshot. Hopefully this kind of helps you out. Those are just players that have been good according to those key stats that I think are important in this tournament and on this course. 
And that's the research help, the tourney preview, and everything we got for the Players Championship at TPC Sawgrass. And now let's talk our best bets. All right, this segment of the show is brought to you by our sponsor, Better Bet. That's BTR Bet, the best place to find, track, analyze, and share your bets. Click the link below. Video coming out soon. It is a great website, uh, so I encourage you to go check that out. But here we go. It's time for the bets. We're going to start with finishing position, and I have my first make-the-cut parlay. So let's pull those up and see what we got. There it is. The first one, Justin Thomas, Sam Burns, and Will Zalatoris all to make the cut. I got this at plus 185 on FanDuel. It's near even money on DraftKings. So FanDuel has some incredible value for this one. I'll just talk briefly about each one. Justin Thomas, uh, he's made the cut four times in a row. More than that, actually. And we're going to talk more about Justin Thomas later. So I'm not going to say too much. But I will say this. He's never missed the cut in eight appearances. That's pretty impressive. But the four in a row, he's just one of a few players to do that. Like we mentioned earlier, he's in great form. I will talk about him later. But I love him to make the cut. Sam Burns, he has not missed a cut in the, on the PGA Tour since the Open Championship in July. Absolutely bonkers how consistent he has been. In his last two years here at TPC Sawgrass, he was second and, after, and also 20th after the first two rounds. So, I mean, he's been solid these first two rounds. He's been consistent. Um, I, to me, that's one of the most mind-blowing stats. Even good players um, do miss the cut sometimes. So for him not to miss a cut since last July is pretty freaking impressive. Um, I just like the, I just like his fit for this course, and I think he's just going to do what he always does, and that's make the cut because he is a machine when it comes to that. And then Willie Z, Will Zalatoris, we will talk about this guy a little later too, my boy. Um, but he is fully back, and uh, he had the lead in the third round last week. He got me really excited. He had, a, I think, a five-stroke lead at one time. Um, but then Scotty Scheffler came on. Zalatoris had a couple bad holes, and uh, it fell apart. It, it fell apart, meaning he still finished for, tied for fourth. He had a heck of a weekend. Um, he is fully back. But again, more on him later. But to make the cut, I think he competes for the championship in this one. So um, give me Zalatoris. Give me Burns. Give me Justin Thomas. All three guys that I would not be surprised if they're up there in the final round competing for the win. But all I need them to do is make the cut for almost plus 200. Give me that value. I love it. Second one, you see Hideki Matsuyama, top 20, plus 170 for one unit. Man, oh man, guys. Matsuyama has been scorching hot lately. He has a win and a 12th place finish the last two weeks. How about that, huh? He also gained 1.59 strokes tee to green in the last eight rounds, which is the last two tournaments. Uh, his short game, which isn't always elite for him, is gaining 1.28 strokes per uh, or in the last eight rounds. So it's been impressive. Um, and he has great course history. He has two top 10s in his last three tries here at the Players' Championship. And oh, by the way, he had the first round lead in 2020 before the tournament shut down for COVID. We all remember that. So he is a... Uh, He's been pretty freaking solid here. So this is pretty simple. So he's an elite form off the tee right now um, and around the green. And uh, there's just not a lot he's not doing well right now. As long as he can roll the ball, putt that ball pretty well here, um, I think he's going to be competing for it. it. I was so close to making this a top 10. It was really tough for me. I'm going to just play it safe, but I do not mind the top 10 here. Like I said, he's been just unbelievable. Two top 10s in his last three tries here at this tournament. Um, but I'll go top 20 plus 170. And then we'll talk about him a little bit later, too. Not much more. That third one, as you see, is Tom Hoagie Bun, Top 20, plus 260 on DraftKings. He is a guy who has had great success here, as always. As you saw on the slides earlier, he has made four consecutive cuts at TPC Sawgrass. And he has been dynamite with strokes gained approach, which is absolutely huge here. Uh, top 10 the last 36 rounds. But how about being the number one golfer on tour in strokes gained approach this season? It's been unbelievable. He is just ball striking has been unreal for him. Um, and uh, he's finished top 30 in four straight appearances here. So um, I know it's top 30. I'm going top 20, but obviously he is competing. Uh, last year, he tied for third. So he's been getting better in his career too. So what he did, you know, four years ago isn't quite the same as who he is right now. Um, I think he's playing the best golf of his career, obviously. Um, in the last five tournaments this season, he's finished in the top 20 in four of those five. That's that's absolutely impressive. Two of those five were top 10. So Gimme Hoagie's in great form, great course history, great fit for this course. Um, Gimme Hoagie for the top 20. And then the fourth one. This is my long shot. I'm only putting a half unit on this one. As you can see, I'm putting a unit on the other ones. Um, Andrew Novak. For those of you that don't know him, it's not a surprise. He's not a well-known guy. But um, in his last four tournaments he's played this season, how about three top 10s? That's right. Three top 10s for a guy in the last four tournaments. And I'm getting plus 550 just to finish in the top 20. 
I know not every single tournament had all the big boys and all that. I understand that. There's a reason these odds are what they are. Um, but I just have to sprinkle a little bit on them just based on his form. But um, his strength is his driving accuracy and approach play, which I love to see here. As we mentioned earlier, the rough is going to be a little tough. There's hazards everywhere. You want a guy who's going to keep that ball away from the hazards in the fairway. Um, and he's been g- gaining strokes with his putter and around the green this year. So he's just really kind of has an all-around game that not many people are talking about. Um, now, in regards to the course course history, that's the one thing he doesn't have. He missed the cut here last year, um, but he's in much better form this year. So, you know, some guys, sometimes you got to take some guys that maybe don't have the best course history, and sometimes you have to take some that do because uh, people will surprise you on the PGA Tour, as you guys know. So give me a flyer for a, quarter, or a half unit on uh, Andrew Novak to finish in the top 20 yet again for the fourth time in five tournaments. And those are the finishing position and the make the cut bets. Uh, my two favorite probably on this page are those first two that make the cut parlay and that Matsuyama top 20. I absolutely love those. I think uh, those are two of my safer bets, whatever that means in golf betting. But anyways, that's what we got for that. Let's go check out the outrights because we are due to hit one. That's right. I think we can hit three or four this year. It's tough in golf, as you guys know. But let's see if we can get one. And I like it here. We got Justin Thomas to start us out to win the tournament at plus two to her 2200. Absolutely everywhere. I'm putting a half unit on this one incredible history with justin thomas here at this course like we talked about he won this tournament in 2021 he has never missed the cut here in eight appearances like i just mentioned eight times eight made cuts there's a reason he also has good history because he fits this course really really well elite iron play that's what he's known for when you think of justin thomas you think he is an elite iron player elite ball striker um and he is absolutely elite around the green short game he has top five strokes gained around the green in the field like we talked about earlier um, it's impressive. You know, when you're going to have these bunkers, the green side, you're going to have to scramble with these greens where if you're just a little bit off, it could roll all the way around to the other side. Um, you want a guy who knows how to handle the short game um, and who knows how to hit ball strike it with these smaller greens as well. So I love Justin Thomas. The only thing I don't love about it is I think a lot of people are on Justin Thomas this weekend. That never usually goes well, but you know what? I just got to trust it and, and what my gut says. So He's absolutely rounding into form. He has five top 12 finishes the last six tournaments. So he is back to being Justin Thomas. He, I mean, there's nothing really more to say. He loves the tournament in great form, fits the course well. Give me Justin Thomas to win this freaking tournament at plus 2,200. And then the second one is my boy. I am going to keep betting him until he wins a tournament probably. I absolutely love him. Give me Willie Z, Willie Zalatoris to win at plus 3,300 on FanDuel for a half unit. Him and JT are going to be two of my favorite bet outright bets this weekend. Um, you know, I don't just like him because he looks like Happy Gilmore's caddy. I like him because he's freaking good. Um, he has two top five finishes in the last month, and he looks like one of the greatest players on planet Earth again. He really does. He's unbelievable. Um, getting almost two strokes tee to green in his last 16 rounds. Putters improving, which you love to see. That elite ball striking that he is known for is back. I mean, it is absolutely back. The only thing he doesn't have here is course history. He's he His best finish is 21st here at TPC Sawgrass in three tries. Um, I'm going to count on his form here, and I think he's a good fit. I mean, when you're a great ball striker, great approach, um, and things like that, and you're starting to putt the ball well, I'll take a chance. I, uh, I think 3,300 is a steal because I think he's a top five player in the world right now with how he's playing. Um, so as long as he can roll it, keep putting that ball, um, I think he's going to be right there at the end. Um, give me Zalatoris just like he was last week, and give me Willie Z to win it at plus 3,300. And then I got two more, um, and they're going to be a little smaller bets, but I got it. I already got Hideki Matsuyama top 20. If he wins it, I, I'm not going to be happy with the top 20. He's got a chance to win it every single time he plays here. So I got to take quarter unit on him, especially when they're going to drop a plus 4,000 on FanDuel. It's absolutely insane. I already talked about him. Um, I like top 10. I already have the top 20 as a bet. Um, he has two top tw- top 10s already. I can't even talk. Um, and he's also might be a good first round leader. Like I mentioned, he did have a first round lead in that COVID year. Um, but Matsuyama just fits everything in this course. He is awesome. So give me Matsuyama. Again, I'm not going to talk more about him because we already did. And then the final one, probably my biggest long, well, it is my biggest long shot. Sahith Thigala to win the tournament at plus 6,500 on FanDuel. Again, I'm just going to throw a quarter unit at this one, but this guy's playing well, man. These odds are just too high, in my opinion. Uh, he's in great form. He has three top six finishes this year. Three top six. That's right. That's pretty impressive for a guy getting plus 6,500 right now. Um, he's been much better off the tee this season, which has really catapulted him into uh, another tier of players, I think, this year, so far at least. 
Um, and that's why he's contending a lot more. But he doesn't have a lot of history here, which is probably why you see the plus 6,500. Um, but just to go over kind of some stats with him this season, he's 12th in total stroke skiing, 21st in stroke skiing putting, 35th in approach shots from 125 to 150. As you know, that 100 to 150 range is kind of where you're looking for approach shots. You're not going to have a lot of 200 or out shots. Um, and he has the skills around the green. That's what he's kind of known for. It's going to help him contend. Um, you know what, but a quarter unit on a guy for plus 6,500 that's already had three top sixes that has a good course fit here, I got to take a chance. So give me Sahith the Gala plus 6,500, and those are my outrights. But, uh, you know, two other golfers I like that didn't quite make it, Shane Lowry, been playing well, and uh, Sam Burns. Man, Sam Burns was really close to making it. I have him in that make-the-cut parlay, but um, I don't mind him as a maybe an outright or top 10 or something like that, too. So... But anyways, those are my best bets at TPC Sawgrass. Man, this is going to be a fun tournament to watch. It's one of my favorites. So leave a comment below with your two first-round leaders. See if you can win some money. And then uh, let me know who you got this weekend as well. We're going to be talking PGA in the Discord as well, following it. If you do want to take Scotty Scheffler, my recommendation is maybe wait till halfway through the first round or after the first round if he's kind of not towards the top and you get a little better odds. But right now... Betting him at plus 550 or 600 is just, that's just yuck to me for golf betting. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it as we try to build this golf community. Hope you guys enjoy the tournament this weekend and we'll talk to you soon.